And so we told you that we're going to be bringing you a guest who is going to be here to talk about networking. Networking is a very important part, especially for those of us who are in the corporate world. Her name is Gloria Dozian, and she's a networking expert. Welcome, Gloria. Hello. Hi. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Gloria. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm excited to be here. All right, oh, you so Glory, we, we know that in your journey to starting to teach women how to position themselves to get recognized in their workplace and basically live the life of their dreams, mm -hmm. you have gone through school, you have your BSc, you have your MSc, you have your PhD, mm -hmm. and yet you still felt unfulfilled. Yes. And decide, decided to pursue something deeper. Yes. When you decided to drop all of this and pursue your passion, what were the fears that you had in your heart and how were you able to conquer them? I think, first of all, I didn't even know what was next. I think it was very scary to be in that place of wanting to have this amazing job and then finally getting it and not feeling that fulfillment, not feeling like, oh, I've actually finally arrived. So first of all, it was a scary place. Um, but I think for me, having women around, looking for, I started looking for women who had achieved amazing things in their careers. And the more I looked for those women and when I found them and I could see that they were excelling, that helped to quell some of my fears. So I think that's why I always emphasize networking. So for me, networking is not just about, you know, trying to connect with VIPs. It's about building connections with people that can help you with your career and that you can also help as well. Mm. All right. So Glory is the founder inspired by Glory. Yes. And as the founder of Inspired by Glory, you teach people networking. Yes. Let's look at how important networking is in navigating through our career paths as you know, professionals, as business people, and entrepreneurs, and mm -hmm. regardless of whatever um, area or whatever career path you find yourself, even as not a business person, mm. how important is networking? I think networking is everything. I think we've, we've deceived ourselves to think that we're, everybody's self-made. You know, I made it myself and everything. We don't realize that even if at the end of the day, it's somebody that is going to sign that check. It's somebody that is going to give you that contract. It's someone that's going to introduce you to someone. It's someone that's going to give you access. So networking is... You know, there's this saying that says um, your, your network is your, your net worth. And people, in fact, people also say that, you know, rich people build relationships. Other people look for jobs. Mm. You know, networking is, is the be-all and end-all. And I, I advise people in 2019, prioritize networking. Prioritize building relationships with people. You can find your mentor through networking. You can find career sponsors. You can build friendships. You can build, you know, there's so many things that networking can do for you in your career. You can get promoted. You can learn how to transition in between careers. You know, networking for me, well, I know people say I'm biased, but networking for me is, it's the main steez. Me okay, too. So right now, <laughs> I'm hearing you describe networking and I'm asking myself, what's the difference between this and nepotism? Because there are people who are hmm. going to feel that, or since you've talked about networking, mm. so it's like, if I don't get long leg, mm. you know, I can't get to that point. Mm. What's the difference? So for me, it's not networking just to know people. It's about being a person of value in that network. So if you're a person of value, it means you earn the access that you receive. So it's not favoritism. It's not, oh, just picking somebody for the sake of picking someone. When you're, if you're networking the way I teach networking, you are sharing your value. You're building a personal brand as you're doing that. You're letting people know why you're important and why you're valuable so that you can get the right opportunities because you deserve them. Mm. All right, now let's look at some of the common excuses people give on why they don't network. Mm. Now, one of it would be, oh, I don't want people to think I'm famsing. Famsing is a millennial <laughs> word. That means you're familiarizing yourself with people so that you assume that you're of equal importance. Mm. Now, what are some of the excuses that people have brought to you to say, oh, this is why I don't network and how can we deal with these excuses? I think for me, the first thing, especially because I deal with women, a lot of women are shy. They don't want to seem desperate. And sometimes they don't even know what to say. We are sitting beside a stranger. What should you even say? And sometimes really it's also a thing of confidence. <coughs> you know, a lot of women, they are, they are doubting their value. And so I say to people, when you start networking, affirm yourself. Tell yourself, I'm in this room for a reason. I deserve to be in this room. I'm a person of value and I have something to say. And then in terms of shyness, start small. Don't go to it. You know, I see a lot of people, they go for networking events and they are giving out their cards. People leave those cards on the table. It's about connecting with people. So start small. Talk to the person beside you. I always advise people, if you go for an event with your friends, after a while, just put your friends to the side. Connect to the person beside you. Hello, how are you? How did you hear about this event? Oh, what, do you like this speaker? What other speakers have you found interesting? Just ask people. Get to know people. That's what networking is about. Building genuine connections with other people. 
So shyness is a major problem. Yes, shyness, and lack of confidence. So basically the way to combat that is start small. You know, yes. you can practice with the people beside yes. you. Yes. Let's also look at targeting, you know, bigger the big fish. So mm. you know there's this event where you have this person you've always you've been shadow mentoring or mm. you've been shadow mentoring. <laughs> you've been reading their books, listening to all their tapes and mm -hmm. their ebooks, like you have lots of mm. ebooks as well. Mm -hmm. You have one on networking, which mm. we'll talk about in a bit. But you know, there's this person is coming to this event and you're going to this event. How do you strategically position yourself to start a conversation with someone you've always admired without wanting them to look down on you? Because the truth is some people will actually look down on you because they're not really in the same mm. class. How do you go about it? So first of all, let's, let's tackle this word of looking, this phrase of looking down on you. I don't think people look down on you. People wonder what you're about. And, and I, don't, I think this is, this is, there's a clear difference. So for me, what I advise people to do is, first of all, connect with people on LinkedIn. Send them a LinkedIn message before you go to this event and say, oh, hello, I've been following your work for a very long time and I am going to get the opportunity to listen to you speak at this event. It would be great to connect with you afterwards. Then when you see them at the event, go up to them and say, oh, I sent you a LinkedIn request. I sent you a LinkedIn message. Now, it's very difficult when someone comes down from the podium like 100 people gather around the person. The person is not going to have the time to talk to you. So just say, oh, I hope it's okay to follow up with you via email. Can I have your card? And then via email, you send the person a, a short email. I always tell people, you know, sometimes people send you emails. They send you three paragraphs, four paragraphs. People are busy. They don't have the time. When you are sending a follow-up email, have one question, the most important question. Either, oh, is it okay to come and meet with you for 30 minutes of your time? Or I have this particular challenge in my career. Can you offer some advice? When, you're, when your email is targeted, concise, people are more likely to respond. Okay, so why did you choose to make Inspired by Glory Academy mainly for women? I know you actually said they are shy. <laughs> and then is there an age bracket actually for the no, women? No, no. Okay, so why I chose women or why I choose to speak to women? First of all, I'm a woman myself and I understand the challenges. I understand what it is to feel like a woman and deal with confidence issues and deal with gender bias and, and all of that. So maybe that, and for my own, Inspired by Glory really is a passion project for me. I've gone through a lot of things that brought me to this place where, where I now feel like empowered to help other women. So it's, for me, it's like a God-given vision. So that's why I speak to mainly women but people like you are convincing me nowadays <laughs> to speak to men as well. But then there's also no, no age bracket. Um, okay. I, I talk to women from the ages of 18. I've spoken to women who are 60 and above. Um, networking, there's no, there's no limits to it. So, no, there's no age limit. Mm -hmm. All right, I still have some networking questions to ask mm -hmm. you. But since she's taking the conversation to the Inspired by Glory brand, let's mm -hmm. just speak about what you do. Okay. You also know that you have ebooks and you have an event coming up soon. Okay, um, so I have various networking events planned throughout the year, um, but I have an ebook and it's, it's a very small e guide which teaches people, one, how to find their networking goals. It also gives people conversation starters. So when you go for an event, how do you start a conversation with complete strangers? And also an e-guide which teaches people what to do before, during, and after a networking opportunity. Brilliant. So now let's still come back to networking. I mm -hmm. want to ask, what are some of the most common mistakes people make when trying to network? Hmm. Hmm. There, are, there are quite a few. I think the, most, the one that for me is most poignant is when people don't follow up. So you see, 80% of networking is staying in touch. So if you are networking with people and you are not, you don't follow up. So like now I meet you and after the event, I don't connect with you after. It was a wasted opportunity. So I think that's the most important mistake I think people make, not following up. So every time you connect with someone, make sure you get their email address, make sure you get their phone number, or even follow them on social media so you can stay in touch with them. Okay, so what is one mistake mm -hmm. that you know that you made at the beginning while building your... Oh, wow, <laughs> one mistake that yes. I know, gosh. You made. Um, one mistake that I... I think not feeling that I, I, I had a right to be in the room. There was a conference I went for. It was an international conference. I was sponsored to attend by a very reputable organization. And I got into the room, and I had CEOs of global companies in that room. And I freaked out. I didn't know. I just felt like, oh, my God, Gloria, what are you doing here? And the other people that were there with me, were, they were going around giving cards and everything. And I felt, I felt like a duck out of water. And I remember the next day, I went into my room, and I was like, I'm not coming out. And after a while, I snapped out of it. I was like, Gloria, please. If somebody found you worthy enough to pick you out of how many people that applied to come for this opportunity, you deserve to be in this room. 
and I snapped up out of it and I went and I started making connections. Fantastic. So Don't yeah. let anybody tell you. In fact, do not allow yourself, make yourself feel like you do not deserve a seat at the table because mm -hmm. you absolutely do. You deserve whatever you want. You can go for it and you can get it. Final question, Glory, before we okay. let you go. So I've made the mistake of not keeping in touch. You know, I've gotten this, I've shared my cards, I've gotten cards as well. But because of procrastination, which is a major problem, I've not been able to follow up in a while, in a really long while. At what point, you know, how do I start up the conversation again? I have this person's mm -hmm. card or this person's contact. How mm -hmm. do I start up a conversation again? I think if you can remember where you met the person, send them an email. And the title of the email should be where you, where you met. So it was great to meet you at Wimbiz, for example. So hello, my name is Glory. It was great to meet you at so and so conference. Sorry I haven't been in touch, but it's great. Happy New Year. It's great to be in touch with you again. I hope it's okay if we stay in touch or I hope it's okay if we have a meeting. And also follow people on social media. Make sure in 2019, make sure if you're a career woman and your LinkedIn profile is not ready, you are not serious. So go to your LinkedIn, make sure your LinkedIn profile is, on, is correct and send those people LinkedIn requests. Some of us are on this table that Glory just shook. And we are going to make sure that we, you know, put our LinkedIn profile and not just focus on Instagram because that's mm. where there are a lot of business opportunities, a lot of jobs that people are sleeping on because they've not updated their LinkedIn. And this is a brand new opportunity for you to start the new year. Reconnect with old contacts, people that exactly. you... You know, some people are, they give you jobs because they remember you, you're in their consciousness. Mm -hmm. So you need to remind them that you're there. We're hoping that after this conversation, it will not just end there. You'd go through your phone book and you reconnect with old contacts or new contacts that you just met, you'd have a follow-up conversation. Thank you so much, Glory. Thank you for because having me. Because I know that I'm going to make moves after this interview. Yay! I that's what I like to hear. That's moves. what I like to hear. <laughs> Thank you so much. How can people follow you and, you know, do you respond to questions? You have mentees, people who want to speak with you directly, you know, have mentorship sessions. How do you go about that? Uh, well, you can follow me on my social media, Inspired by Glory, and also on my LinkedIn page, Glory Adosian, or you can send me an email, glory at inspiredbyglory.com. I always reply, even if it takes me a while to do so. But Fantastic. I to enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.